Hey everybody, how's it going? Awesome weather we've been having. It's been super, super warm. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up my fingers. You mechanics out there that do YouTube videos, <laughs> how often can you wipe your screen or your camera? Uh, if you guys see a video where the, the lights kind of look like rays, it's because the guy touched his finger on the camera. I do that all the time. Anyhow, how's it going everybody? I'm having a great day. Uh, this week has not gone according to plan. Uh, we'll call it Mo Mechanics, Mo Problems. No, that's not what we'll call it. Mo McCullough's more Mo Problems. <laughs> this is McCullough Super Pro. You guys saw it run in the last video. Uh, and then I followed up uh, a couple days later and I went and I worked this saw out for an entire day. Okay? And uh, it ran pretty good. Now, it is an old 45-year-old points uh, points ignition saw. We don't know, right? I've I've changed a lot of the rubber parts, pretty much all the rubber parts. I've been in and out of the carburetor. But if you guys noticed in that video, the saw sometimes was a little slow to come down to idle. And I don't know if you guys heard it. There's a little stumble at idle sometimes. It, it, it's loping. Ba 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 ba. It wouldn't stall, but it would almost load up. Well, it didn't do that on the first day. The first couple times I ran it, it was nice and rich, tuned easily. As I've been running it, it's been getting worse. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, that's the only way to describe it. Well, here's the deal. We got a couple of problems with this saw. And uh, one I didn't anticipate, well, I guess both I didn't anticipate. So, as you guys see, I have the ignition side ripped apart on this saw. Um, I went to start it yesterday, and I noticed two problems. Uh, the first problem, I'll, I'll tell you guys, I'll show you guys. The second problem is, this thing wouldn't start. Well, I noticed last time I checked the spark, usually if I'm doing a spark plug check on a new build, I'll pull it over and, and look for spark. Well, the spark was orange, not blue. So that was my first thought. Eh, maybe we're going to have an ignition problem with this. But again, the saw was running fine. So I figured, yeah, it's, you know. I'm of the mindset. I don't, I don't go looking for trouble where there's none to be had. If the saw runs and tunes okay, and the spark isn't exactly how I want it to be, I don't, I don't start throwing parts at it. So, um... Anyhow, this thing wouldn't start yesterday, friends, and I, <laughs> let me tell you, it was one of those nights where I just had to throw in the towel, um, and I'm sure you guys out there have had nights like that before, and uh, again, full disclosure on this channel, I show everything, because that's power saw building. I mean, I could build this on one video, zing, 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 edit out all the little issues and have a running saw, but it's like, that's no fun. This is the channel of learning, and uh, when I have trouble with a saw, I'm going to show you guys. So, let's bring you in closer here, and uh, let's have a look, see what's going on. I'm just going to bring you guys right in here. I won't even turn off the camera. We did a little shop cleanup, and I actually decided, look at that fancy electrical right there. <laughs> here guys, check this out. Trying to put out some of my display saws, stuff that I, you know, I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, that's a that's a 510 still XL12, pretty clean XL12 actually, and uh, that's that 3071 Pioneer, and that's 650. That's 650 runs, and I've never done a video with it. We'll have to remedy that. Okay, let's see how close we can get you guys here. I had the shiniest bench yesterday, and then uh, the saw gods didn't want us to uh, continue that. Okay, first things first, guys. That uh, that mount repair we did, uh, <laughs> it's a no-go. Um, on a 1 to 10 scale, I'd rate it as a 0. Look, this mount literally broke right off. This saw was cutting in a circle almost. It was so bad, right? It was leaning one way when I was cutting it. It was, it was actually bending. So again, 
we're gonna have to pull this saw completely down and we gotta fix these mounts i have another idea and uh i'll do a separate video on that for you guys again just trying to put the mac knowledge out there okay so we have our ignition system now guys i ripped this saw apart i don't even have the points cover on it right now i'll probably take it back again these are the points that were in it let's see if we can okay see how they're like pitted these points were burnt up okay now again there's a camshaft on the crank all right picture camshaft there's a lobe on it as it gets to top dead center it opens this when this is closed it charges the condenser now this saw had an original McCullough condenser in it but as you can see the outer case is corroded so I had another set of points for this saw that looked basically new and another condenser that looked basically new now I don't know if it is new okay so I put a new set of points in this right now uh, I grabbed a spare coil um, I believe it was Ben Shelton this is the coil that was on this saw this was all cracked and look it's full of little cracks I JB welded them shut now this coil has been more or less good I put a new wire in it and uh, now I'm not sure this coil is a different color. This might be a 1010 coil or something along those lines, but we're going to give her a go. Um, I mean, I guess I could reinstall the coil that was on it because this coil was making decent spark. But uh, we're going to give her a go with this coil. They look exactly the same, okay? Um, exactly the same, except for this one's not all cracked up. Whether they are or not... I'm unsure, but we're going to put this coil on. I put a new wire, brand new wire in it. And I put this coating on it so that it doesn't rub here. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to inspect all the wiring and get rid of anything that looks like it could be a problem. Okay. Now we are going to, we're going to mount this coil. Which way does it go? This way. Okay. We're going to mount this coil onto this saw and we're going to try and see if we can make this thing spark. Um, I'm trying to give it the yes feeling, but I have a feeling that that's not going to happen, but we'll give her a go. So, okay. So this is your here. I'll show you guys for any of you that are working on max. This is your uh, ground wire. Okay. And it goes from this side to the top here. Just in case, because I know sometimes maybe you pulled the saw apart a year ago and you're uh, putting it back together and you can't remember. It happens. We've all, haven't we all been there, friends? You know, you, you pull a saw down, oh, I'm going to work on this right away, and then life happens. And uh, I tend to do that with my own saws, not with other people's saws. Other people's saws, I'm like way more meticulous with my saw. Yeah, I... The worst car in the parking lot is usually the mechanics, right guys? <laughs> Funny how that works. So, let's see if we can get this thing to fire. Um, where is my... I have a business card here that is 0.1 of an inch. Or, sorry, it is 10 thousandths. Or, it's 12 thousandths when it's compressed. Okay? Uh, these are... The spec on this is... I think 11 thousandths to 15 thousandths is the spec. So 12 thousandths is like right where we want to be. Okay, I'm just going to reach this down. Okay. Again, guys, I just, I want to make this as good as I can for Buckin. I know he is more than capable of working on these things. And uh, when I've had an issue, uh, he the guy knows a lot about Max, and I appreciate that. I know a lot about a little. You, you know what I mean? I'm a general mechanic. I don't specialize in any one brand, but I guess if you wanted to pick a brand, it would be Husqvarna. 
Okay, so we have our points condenser right here. This boot is exactly how long we need it to be. Now, I'm going to fight with this off camera. Um, actually, I'll show you guys. Let's see if we can get this going. Okay, so what I do is you push the spark plug boot as far as you can in. Usually I'll put a little lubricant on it. So hold on guys, I'm going to lube it up so that it uh, slides on there a little bit better. Okay guys, now I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. If you push it through, you can see the end of the spark plug wire is in there. Now this is how I do it. Again, just, just sharing the little tricks that I've learned over the years. I grab a good pair of pliers, or in a case, in this case, this pair of pliers. Now, what you try to do is, you try and fold. Now, these Max, like a bigger uh, spark plug wire, I noticed, like it, it fits better in the coil. Um, on a normal, on a normal saw, you can usually pull this through pretty easily. And again, I'm going to fumble with this on camera. Hold on guys, I'm going to get it pulled through and I'll put the end on. Let's see if this thing makes fire now. Okay, folks. Here is my spark plug end. And I'm actually going to look for a different one. Okay, here's our spark plug end. Now if you look, you poke it through the sheath. And again, a lot of you guys have probably done this, but let's... Uh, Let's share the knowledge for the younger folks and those, you know, not everybody grew up pulling wrenches. I, I did fortunately, so, or unfortunately sometimes, like when the transmission blows up and you're the mechanic, but you guys know what I'm saying. And uh, now, pull it back through. Now, I like this boot plug combo because it fits tightly. All right, now pull it back through. Okay, and then there you go. Okay, make sure your plug fits on there. Okay, beautiful. Now, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna put my drill onto the end of this crankshaft to see if we can get good spark. I'm just gonna grab my battery. Okay, right here. Let's see if we can do this on video. I also noticed, guys, so a couple of you guys commented. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Nope, doesn't want to. Okay, this is the correct champion plug for this saw. Okay. Now, I noticed right away, when I put the right plug in this saw, it didn't run very good. Um, maybe, again, maybe that's a sign of a bad ignition. Um, okay. I'm going to put this in there. Now, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to grab a piece of wire and I'm going to actually wire it to this saw so that I can make sure I got good contact. Okay, I'm going to turn the lights off. I got, you guys can see, I got this attached to this bolt here. So we have a good connection. Now, I'm going to take my drill and I got it on the end. Okay. And again, we have no spark, guys. So what does that tell you? I'm going to zoom you guys back out here so you can see a little bit better. Actually, right there. You guys should be able to see. So let me get this back on the end here. I'm just trying to keep my finger over the light on my drill. There we go. Okay, no spark. Now, I'm going to zoom you guys back out. Now, in that case, here's what you do to, re to rule out to rule out that you don't have... I'm going to turn the light back on here, guys. Rule out that you don't have a bad kill switch wire, which is right here, right? Unplug it. If this wire is grounding or this wire... That should solve your issue. Now, these wires I've inspected, and this one, okay, these wires are good. I'm not concerned about them being the issue. 
So the only thing left, because we know our points are good, they're basically brand new. We, we're, no, we're not sure about that condenser. But again, we put the drill back on. Okay, and I'm gonna spin this thing around. We don't have any spark, okay? So what do we do now? We we got this saw, it's rowdy, and uh, we want to run. What, what do you do now? Well, let's talk about that. Okay, so that was I, I that was just basically a recap of what I did yesterday. Um, I I changed out the points. I filed the points, the original points. I changed the condensers. So what does that tell us? We don't have spark, but we have a point system. Now, typically new saws, they spark or they don't. Well, here's what's funny, friends. Well, turning that there, uh, this here machine over, I took my booger hook here and I touched the spark plug inadvertently and I touched my pinky to the handle. It lit me up like a Roman candle. So, hmm. So what does that tell us? Well, what happens when the points close? When the points close, it energizes the condenser, okay? If you have a weak condenser, you can still get spark, but not enough spark, okay? So, and I bet you, and there's no real way to see it, I tried with the scope behind there, but I don't want to spin this. I'll bet you money that when these points are opening, uh, I bet you you're getting a little bit of a spark there, and that's what's burning the points up. It's It's... It's discharging the electricity and it's not energizing the coil enough. Now I could be completely wrong, but so, uh, so that was funny because I was like, well, this thing's got tons of spark. Well, no, it's sending enough voltage to light me up, but it's not sending enough to go through the spark plug. So what do we do now? Other than change the front mounts, which I will do, and I'll do it on video again. You guys seem to be enjoying this build and uh, so am I. You know what guys, these old saws, I like working on them. They're not easy. Um, you spend as much time looking for parts as you do building the saw. Sometimes you gotta make parts. Uh, the crank seals in this, I have to go to like seven different bearing places to get the right seals. Um, but yeah, it, it's just fun and I enjoy sharing it with you guys. These Max, uh, now that I've ported one, oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, and now, think about it. How's this thing going to run when it actually has a proper ignition in it? Sorry, I'm rambling. I digress. So what do we do now? I ordered a Oregon ignition module for this thing. And uh, I'll when I get it, it should be here this week. When I get it, I'll have to put a link in the description. And uh, so that, you know, you can see what the deal is. But... Uh, I'm going to put one of those ignition modules. Now, from what I can tell, you mount it somewhere down here by the flywheel and it eliminates the points and condenser. I don't even have to run the points plate or any of that stuff. So we're going to try one of those on this because as of right now, we have a saw that doesn't start, doesn't idle, doesn't do anything. Um, I was thinking we had ignition problems and we do. So them are the brakes folks. and. Uh, so basically, I ordered a bunch of them and because we're going to do more max and some of them are going to have points. So I'd like to have one on hand and, uh, you know, have them on hand so that if I need them. So there you guys go. Remember the brakes sometimes. And when I have issues, that's content. And, and, and it's like uh, when I used to work on saws and you're like working on a saw for a customer or whatever, it's like, oh, you get super frustrated. Well, now I go, this is great content. So, uh, there you guys go. I'm super happy with this saw. It rips, uh, the, the tunability issues, it's the ignition. It cropped out yesterday and, uh, it makes sense now. So, you know. It's, I'm actually happy because you know what's funny, friends? I was going to mail this to Bucken this week. And literally, I like to be super thorough. I want to run the saw in all temperatures. I want to work it. 
I will take a build like this and bury it in a big log and just the last video of me running it. What was I doing? Burying it in a big log and just letting it eat and, and working it. Uh, when I stumped that log, I'm not doing tree work there. I'm testing the capabilities of the saw. When I was stumping that log, I was actually feeding it hard. Um, trying to see if I could get the saw to fall out of its torque curve and not continue going. And also trying to get the saw hot. I want to get it hot to, to, to find ignition problems or, you know, so, uh, it ran pretty good in the last video, but again, it's having trouble coming back down to idle. Now, this saw does not have an air leak. I've been through this thing many times. I, th I was thinking air leak or, and or carburetor, but here's the thing. I put another carburetor on this that is good and it ran worse actually. Um, it overfueled so bad I was having to lean the saw out. Typically, if you have an air leak, the saw is just lean. Um, this thing was too rich with a different carb on it. So, again, it all pointed to an ignition failure that was imminent, and I'm glad I kept the saw around because it, it, uh, it failed yesterday. So, there you guys go. Uh, <laughs> that are the brakes, and uh, that's, uh, that's life in my world, and uh, I'm going to share it with you guys. So when we get that module in, we will tear the saw back down and we will put that module in. We got a couple of little things. We got to replace that mount. Um, there's a broken screw. There's two broken screws in the recoil of this thing. I would like to try and repair those if I can. Um, if I can't, then we'll leave it as is because uh, I don't want to do more damage to the saw. Anyhow, friends, uh, them are the brakes. Trying to get a few loose ends uh, off the bench so that we can move on to new projects. The project on this was how warm can I turn it up, wh whether my ideas are are uh, rational, and then it's our journey's just beginning. I'm gonna mail this to Bucken and he's gonna run it a lot, and uh, you know hopefully he likes it. And if he likes it, he's gonna put a lot of miles on it. And uh, either way, I'm happy. If he's not happy with this saw, I have two or three more ideas on how I can make these go fast. Because they're a clamshell, I mean normally I just walk over the lathe and I can adjust my timing numbers and my squish and all that depending on what I want to do. Can't do that on this, so um, it's not an easy saw to port. So um, Having never ported one of these, I was like, okay, here's what I know about other saws. I'm going to apply that to this. Uh, it seems strong. So, again, it's all about feedback for me. The more feedback I get, the more crazy ideas I'm going to work on, and the better saws I'm going to build, and the better content you guys are going to get. Okay. Well, this is what's going on. And uh, as always, I appreciate you guys hanging out in the saw shop. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later, guys.